Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Arya Sharma, and I'm the Chair in Obesity Research and Management at the University of Alberta. Today, I want to talk to you about the Edmonton Obesity Staging System, which is a system that we came up with uh, to tell us how sick obese patients are, rather than just using BMI to tell how big patients are. Uh, when you look at obesity, we are talking about a chronic progressive condition. Uh, but we know that there are people across a wide range of body mass indices who can be quite healthy. You can either have a lot of health care problems or you could be pretty healthy. So when we look at that uh, uh, across the continuum, we have uh, certainly patients who have mental health issues, uh, medical issues, functional issues. And you can be obese and have none of those problems, which will put you at a stage zero. When, once, when you have preclinical problems, mild problems, that puts you at a stage one. Now, once you actually have comorbidities, uh, like diabetes, like uh, sleep apnea, or uh, like fatty liver disease, etc., uh, you would be a stage two patient. And if you have clinically relevant end organ damage, uh, you would be stage three. Now, unfortunately, there are also people who are at stage four where you have end stage obesity, meaning that you have target organ damage, which is very unlikely to reverse even with considerable weight loss. Now, having used the system, one of the questions, of course, is what happens to people who have stage 2 obesity? Are these people at increased risk over time of uh, dying of obesity or related problems? So we went to a large data set, the uh, uh, NHANES data set, of you know, over 8,000 people to see what is the long-term prognosis of people who ha have Edmonton obesity stage uh, 0 or 2. And that is shown on this slide here. When we look at in the NAH data set, when we look at BMI categories alone, you can see that all of these lines overlap, which means that uh, overweight, class 1 obese, class 2 obese, class 3 obese, all have the same survival line, which means that just looking at BMI does not actually tell me whether a patient is at increased risk of dying. Now, if you take the same patients and break them down based on the Edmonton obesity uh, class, uh, staging system, you can see how these lines nicely separate. So here we have uh, uh, patients or individuals who are uh, at stage 3, and you can see that they have an increased risk of dying. Stage 2 patients also have an increased risk, and so do stage 1. But what's really surprising here is that the individuals who are stage 0 can go over almost 16 years here with uh, virtually no risk of dying. Now, this does not mean that they will stay healthy all of that time, but if your primary goal of obesity treatment is to reduce mortality, well, then certainly the stage 0 patients are doing pretty well. And what's quite interesting is that even when we look at individuals with class 3 obesity, meaning that these are all individuals who have a BMI over 40, you can still see that the same applies. So even at a BMI of 40, you can go 16 years uh, pretty much at stage 0 or stage 1 with no increased uh, impact on your survival. Now, we've taken this information and converted this into a clinical tool that we use where we can uh, classify patients in clinical practice based on uh, not having any symptoms of obesity-related risk factors, no physical symptoms, no psychological symptoms, no physical limitations, and that would be a stage zero patient. Now, that can progress, of course, to patients who have subclinical problems, mild problems, and we think that these patients can be managed not so much with weight loss. If they just improve their diet, if they just get more physically active, if they can work on stress management, if they can work on sleep, you can move a patient from stage one to stage zero with virtually no weight loss. Now, that might look very different from a patient who has stage 2 or stage 3 obesity. Here, you're talking about patients who have diabetes, about patients who have sleep apnea, or perhaps about patients who actually have uh, knee or joint problems uh, that might need to be treated. Now, those patients will clearly benefit from better management, um, and these are the kind of patients that you might perhaps want to consider even for bariatric surgery if they are large enough and if the problems are big enough. Now, when you talk about stage 4 patients, those unfortunately are the patients who have end stage end organ damage, which means that even if these patients were to lose a lot of weight or get bariatric surgery, for example, some of those complications would not reverse because they are irreversible. We think that basing treatment decisions on the Edmonton Obesity Staging System uh, in supplement to the classical BMI uh, system provides much more information and is much more useful uh, uh, advice to the patient but also to decision makers uh, who have to decide on what part of obesity treatment are we actually going to fund and how are we going to provide access to obesity treatments in our healthcare system. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Sharma. Thank you.